You can't have failed to notice that there's been protest in central London today. You heard Boris Johnson saying that um, this is a city that supports protests and where we are proud to have protests taking place. But he said he always is aware that he finds it baffling sometimes to work out what those people who protest for, for the G8 actually want, actually require. He says some of the things that are being said are, are pretty muddy, to say the least. And um, we'd love to get your views about whether you support the protesters who we've seen in London today and also... If people want change, is this kind of protest that we've seen the only way of getting their voices heard? Because it's not pretty, it's not particularly attractive to see, and I'm not convinced it gets anybody anywhere because there isn't a clear view. The, the headline is Carnival Against Capitalism. They're complaining about the, uh, the G8 meeting in Northern Ireland next week, but what the alternative is, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Jamie Kelsey Fry saw some of the events today at first hand. He's a friend to this programme. He's been in doing the papers before. He's also contributing editor for New Internationalist magazine. And he joins us live tonight. Evening to you, Jamie. Welcome to the show. Um, fr from your standpoint, were you there as an observer or were you taking part? Uh, I was, uh, as a supporter, I fully support what the actions were about today. And um, I, I was there in 2005 in Glen Eagles as well for the same reasons. Right. And, and the actions that, that are there, what, what, are the, what are the main areas that they're saying they disagree with? OK. Um, there was a fantastic banner, Simon, in Tigley Circus at the end of the day, which said, make extreme wealth history. So it's tuning into the sort of, um, slogan that was being used by the, uh, an organisation in 2005 that said "Make Poverty History." Yes, do you remember that when yeah, everyone I was do, wearing yeah. their rubber bands? Yeah, uh, I think that summed up very much where a, a lot of the protesters were coming from today. Make extreme wealth history. If you think about it, that would be the first thing. If you did that, then we wouldn't have the really worries about poverty. It's about the same kind of things that are happening right across the world and have been for the past two years, where people, and it's mainly young people, who uh, are saying that they don't believe that this economic system is just, is democratic, is sustainable. The actual economic system itself is completely failing and it's only rewarding 0.001% of the planet. They also have a very strong views about politics in the sense that uh, uh, these people today, there were people from Italy, Spain, Greece, Algeria, Germany, and everyone's got exactly the same message, which is they believe there's no proper democracy, no proper politics. It is a corporatocracy, and the politicians are basically in, in the pockets of corporations. Isn't, so isn't, VA, isn't one of no the issues, though, and I think, I think there'll be many people, and we, we've spoken about this on the programme before, who'll be cheering what you say. The, the danger is it's, it's very simple to be against the current system, and it's a system that's been with us for certainly all of my lifetime and, and probably for the rest of it too. But, but there isn't really an alternative, is there? The alternatives we see around the world is, we, you know, we have to be lucky to have a, 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 you know, a, a delightful dictator who, who looks on us happily, or we look at other countries where there is no freedom whatsoever. Uh, there are plenty of alternatives, and uh, that's something that has become really clear over the past couple of years, what's happened with this movement. I mean, I think the most important individual is Tim Berners-Lee, because it's because of him that this movement has become global. And, and not only has the basic rhetoric become global, but also the solutions have become global. If you just think in this country, for example, um, you could have a million jobs created straight away if, if you went to a, a green economy, which is a very simple thing to do. But also, you know, there are, there are, it's not difficult at all to address the huge inequality um, within, within the society. And uh, the solutions, if you go to New Economics uh, Foundation, for example, these are people who are looking at um, much better alternative systems. Um, they are out there. It is easy to find it, but it's not something that's going to be suggested through your normal corporate um, channels because... The business is good for corporations. Of course, but there, there, is, there is a problem that I can see, and I just wonder how um, whatever people wish to be there in the future, we can guarantee that what we need is what we'll get alongside any benefits. I mean, largely, and, and just tell me if I'm wrong on any of these, what, what most people who are protesting today would like to see a continuation, I would imagine, of free and fair elections where we, we all have a vote and we can all vote for what we want. Well, would that's that be very fair? interesting because... No, I don't think it would be because so we I know what they'd say. The we currently have. Of course, they want a democracy, but they'd want a, a democracy where there's there's people they can vote for who represent the, the vision that they have and the world that they want to see. But that's our fault, no, no isn't it? Because we're we're that. not standing for election. Uh, well, that's interesting. Yes. Well, because there because are other how, ways. how I mean, can you what, protest what, 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 that or, there aren't people to vote for when yeah. there aren't people to vote for? 
that's not the government's fault. That's look, the reason why they're in. Potentially, look what, what Boris said, saying that you know the city you know supports protests. What I saw today was not a city supporting protest. What I saw today, it, uh, I, I, I saw a woman who was arrested by ten policemen because she had a silk tip. And it was in Regent Street. Loads of people saw it. And there's, there's this kind of policing. You know, people, your listeners who saw the Evening Standard front um, page picture today, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of police all day long. This is a really extreme form of policing. And it's well, very, very the, the reasons very, why very, they very, say it was, yeah. I think that the total that I've seen was 37 arrests out of many thousands of police and many th equally more thousands of protesters. What they were saying today was the reasons why the police had to be there in such force is because those who were protesting failed to interact and speak to the police prior to that, and that's their usual method. I think there's a lot more to the story, to be honest, um, because all, I think that kind of policing also makes people terrified to go onto the streets, and, and it makes people... They see these photographs and these kind of reports, and what they say is... You know, I really agree with what those protesters are doing, but it's frightening to go down there. You know, it's outrageous. It's actually putting people away from what is their democratic right. But, but what they were saying was, you know, if, if they had engaged, if the protesters had engaged with the police beforehand and talked about what they wanted to do, they would have enabled this to happen. And what we saw on the screens today, and certainly the live coverage I was quite glued to during the day today, was protesters not even adhering to the police's request to stay on the main route. They were running down side streets. Um, they were bombarding and barricading themselves into that one building in Soho. Uh, and, and various other things, which, which clearly inspired the police to act, because you, you can't have the police sitting on their hands, can you, during, okay. during that kind of thing? OK, so with, with the, um, the Convergence Centre, which is the Squat and Soho in Big Street, the police arrived there early this morning and, and barricaded the people in, stopped the people from coming out. And that, but that they, they broke they in in the first place, did they, the people who were in there? Uh, yes, it's, it's uh, still legal to squad a property. But that, that property in particular had been empty for a long, long time. It was a police training barracks. But isn't it only legal if you don't have to get damage to get in? Yeah, absolutely, and they won't have done, I'm sure. Well, we don't I mean, know. I, I, I was there last night, and I, I, I'm, I guarantee the average age was 24. Uh, like I said before, I met people from Italy, Spain, Algeria, Greece, Turkey, all these countries that are being affected in the same way. And they're genuinely really uh, inspiring brave young people. That's what I really believe, that hand on heart. The way they've been depicted as troublemakers who just, you know, want to run the circles around the police is far from the truth. The reason they don't agree to give information to police about what their plans are, I would imagine, is because if, as soon as you do that, you'll get kettled. We've, uh, we've got some calls and, and people who want to ask you some questions, and I'm, I'm just trying to keep this as balanced as I can. One of the things I want to ask you before we, we do take some calls, Jamie, and if you want to add, uh, please do, 0207 224 2000 is our number. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask was, was this. You know, one of the things we celebrate is the freedom we have through things like technology to communicate all the things that are going on. We talk about Twitter revolutions and, and Facebook um, changing the world. Um, all of the things that we use, everything that we rely on, you could argue is the, co is, is, the, is the product of the capitalist state, if you want to call it in that way. Every piece of technology, every computer, every smartphone, all the, all the vehicles we have, the way we have enough food to, to, uh, to, to keep us all alive, the system that we have in place is largely, however many people are making money from it, is largely inspired by capitalism. And the danger is you can end up throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on the end of the phone being an anti-capitalist at all. Well, but what but that's what they are. They're, it was a carnival against capitalism. Yes, that was the title. But there's, there's so it's not, it, that there. wasn't what it was? A huge, that was the title, yeah, I agree, but a huge amount of people there weren't anti-capitalists. But they are, all the people there are... But, but isn't that the problem, because there's no clear line about what this is about? I don't know how many of your listeners, when they, when they hear a simple slogan, make extreme wealth history, I'm sure most of your listeners get very clearly what, that, what that's explaining, don't they? But then you say the, the lottery winner who won £161 million, are they allowed to keep that? The, the, no, the guy who invents... So they're, they're referring to the huge corporations who are absolutely making a killing profit at, at the cost of a, a world that's you know, rapidly running out of resources. You've got two welfare systems in this country at the moment. One is the corporate welfare system and the other one is the social welfare system. The social welfare system has been completely punished 
and the corporate welfare system is being hugely rewarded. It's just tied up. Stay, stay there. It's fascinating listening, and we'll, we'll let you come back. Just some questions for you from listeners that um, hopefully you'll enjoy taking, if, if that's OK, Jamie. Uh, it's a pleasure, Simon. All right, stay there. Jenny is there. Evening to you, Jenny. Hi. Um, uh, Jamie, I'd like to know what you do for a living and what all these other people do, because, quite frankly, are they having their annual holiday running around the streets of London? Because... If you will listen to me, uh, and if I can just finish, Anna and a lot of the uh, OB broadcasters today were outside, and they said that it was Zanna and Neil on, on this station. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, they, they they were running around and they didn't even know where they were going, and they were just meeting in all different places. But what I'm saying to you is, how can these people possibly earn a living? and then be on the streets of London causing mayhem, because well, that's what they are causing. Just, and also, the other thing is, Simon's asked you a lot of questions, and the main one he asked you is what your alternative was. And your answer was the usual politician's answer. Well, that's a good question. But you didn't say what your alternative was. Just to say, Jenny, I mean, there's two things I want to say briefly before J Jamie comes in, because I've, I've battled with him, and I need to battle against um, people who put points him too. Um, I was free during the day. I work in the evenings. They may well have done, and, and, and it's only one day. They could have taken a day off. But it, it is one of those things, Jamie, that people throw at you, isn't it? Uh, all the time, yeah, absolutely. And that's, uh, that's absolutely fine. I'm really glad to have the opportunity to answer it. So, personally, I was a teacher for 22 years. I now work for a children's uh, charity, sort of arts charity. Um, and Simon's absolutely right. There's plenty of people down there who... Well, by the vast majority of people down there work, but it's easy to take a day off, and that's what generally happens. The, the sort of stereotype of them all being, you know, scroungers on the dole and soap dodgers, and, and uh, you know, that's just not the truth. And, and the and other point Jenny made was the, the question of the question about the alternative. The alternative. She was worried about a politician-like answer that she may have heard from me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't just simply saying, oh, that's a good question without having an answer. But, but the fact is that there are. A huge amount of alternatives, and uh, you know, for example, with uh, Occupy, we had the Penn City University. So every day we had experts coming down, really well-known experts, economic experts, and writers coming down and giving us talks about much fairer ways of, of dealing with the resources and, and what we've got in this world together, where there's much more equality. You know, and they, they make complete sense. Jamie, stay there. Jenny, thank you for the call. We, we will discuss this in more detail later, but we've only got Jamie for a limited time. Dave is there. Uh, evening to you, Dave. Welcome to the program. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to speak to Jamie. Yes, he's Hello, listening. Jamie? He's listening. Yeah. Uh, right, I, I back you a lot in everything you've said today. I mean, this government is just steamrolling everything they want to do. I've looked at this on television today. I've seen all these police. We've got all these mosques that have been surrounded because of the problems. Let's get someone in the air tonight who's been broken into and see what assistance they got from the police. Jamie? The Jamie? Thank you, Dave, because we got a lot of over-assistance from the police all day, to be honest. And I, as I said earlier, I really appreciate your support, Dave, by the way. But as I, as I said earlier, I, I really strongly suggest that what's happening is that people are being put off coming into the streets. I mean, we've had our NHS privatised by a back door recently. Where was everyone? People are frightened to come out of the streets. The way it's depicted is, no, it's just a bunch of soap-dodging losers who cause trouble and break windows. That's not the truth. These are normal people from every walk of life standing up for their rights and saying that this world has to be fairer. And that's what's happening. Jamie, I'd love to speak to you some more. And there are so many other points I'd, I'd, I'd like to put. I know listeners would as well, but I thoroughly um, am grateful for the time, Jamie. And where no, are you still out started. or are you, you back now? No, we're, uh, we're, we're back now. It's, uh, I'm an old man. It's very tiring <laughs> running around like that. I'm telling you now, Simon. It's going to talk to you. We'll get you in again very soon to, uh, to go through the papers and review the day with us. Jamie Kelsey Fry is a contributing editor of New Internationalist magazine, and uh, you can also follow him on Twitter, at Jamie Kelsey Fry. It is all one word. Simon Letterman Show, BBC London 94.9.